What's up, Casey? Give thanks, Jason. Give thanks to the Lord. Dang it, Jason. I said give thanks. Thank you. Thanks. <laughs> okay. Praise him. PTL. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> for real. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. He is good. His love endures forever. It, it doth. It doth endureth eternally. <laughs> it's a good day, man. It, it's a great day. You know what today is? Um, it's two days before my birthday. Two days before your birthday, but that wasn't where I was going. Okay. So happy, um, what oh, do you call pre. this? Pre, I don't even know. pre birthday. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what to call it. I don't know. Either. Yeah, yeah. Anyways, happy birthday in advance. Thank you, sir. But today is a uh, double header podcast day. It is. We're, we're, uh, back yeah, back. we're knocking two out. Mm. It's going to be good, brother. Yeah. I'm excited. I'm excited. We have a, a very handsome smart man at the table with us. I mean, really. His name is Jason Villanueva. <laughs> um, but that's besides the point. I uh, So I want to give a shout out to Hayden. Mm. Hayden from Alabama. So check this out. This is our listener shout out. And this is from the Salty Dogs podcast at gmail.com inbox. And so Hayden says, hey, I found a show around three months ago and I have a 45 minute drive to work. I'm excited every morning to drive to work listening to you guys. That's how good the show is. I'm a fairly new follower of Christ. This is my first podcast experience, and it feels so genuine. I just wanted to let you guys know you're touching and impacting my life in ways that only can be done through Christ. And I'm telling people about it and using things I've learned to apply in my life. So it's not just listening, but it's application. So that's a big deal. I've had a similar path of drugs and lifestyle that you two had before Christ, Luckily, the Lord rescued me at the young age of 23. God bless you guys coming from Alabama. Dang, Bama coming in strong. Hey, I hope that? those I hope those cheeks are rosy right now, as usual. That's right. The rosy cheeks. We we hope the rosy tre- <laughs> cheeks upon our friend Hayden. Yeah. No, that's great. I actually uh, sent him back a uh, a uh, an email and just you sent didn't tell him. Me inc- you did that. Well, I, what I actually said was I, I know that I can speak for Casey and myself. And oh, so okay. then I used we in the email. There we go. So I didn't forget you, nice. Casey. Yeah. So appreciate that. How about that? I like that. So we love listening or hearing from our listeners. Yeah. So check out saltydogspodcast.com. You can go to our contact page and that'll give you a link to our Facebook where you can message us or leave us a post. You can email us saltydogspodcast at gmail.com or just at the website. There's a contact form. Let us know what's going on. Yeah. Just shoot us a line. Stop by and say what's up. Yeah. Say, what's up, Casey? What's up? No, I mean, like, the people writing in should say, what's up, Casey? Because I'm the one that gets the emails. I know. And so then... Shouldn't we have a joint account? Nope. Okay. (laughs) I hold the keys to the email, brother. I hold the keys to the kingdom. (laughs) It's awesome sauce. You got plans for your birthday? Uh, I'm going to go to the lake. With the son and the wife? No, my wife's working. Oh, man. You get to have all the fun without her. I know. Young Ezra will be there though. Young E. Easy. Young Easy, bro. Easy. Young Easy. He's How old is he now? Uh, seven months. Seven months. How fat about is, that? Fat as ever. It's great. Yeah, it is Just great. Just plumping him up, huh? <laughs> fat and happy. Like a fat, happy kid, man. That's what I'm talking about. He's he's happy most of the That's time. That's good. Unless, That's good. He's try- unless we're trying to put him down for sleep and then... He's like, no, I don't want to do it. I'm yeah. not about that nap time. No. About he's that not life. about that life he's at all. not about that life. No. I'm about that nap life. <laughs> so I'm talking about... <clears throat> so at the table, Oof. Act- the the handsome wise guy I was talking about earlier. One of my favorites. What, why don't you introduce him? Tell us who he is. Young Dion Gates. Young right. Dion Gates. Back for the third time. Hey, right? Yeah. Third. I, mean, I feel kind of like I'm being, you know, asked to come to Saturday Night Live. I've been here how many times? Have I been here more than anybody? No. No? Oh, got, shoot. I think maybe. I think no, I think Skyler's oh, been man. here more than ever anybody. Sky, I think he's got Skyler tied. Real, maybe. Come yeah. on. They're in a tie. <laughs> well, I'm I'm we'll, signing up for next we'll, week. We'll invite them both on the podcast one night and when they get there we'll throw we'll, down. We'll actually say, "Hey, actually there's no podcast tonight, but you get to like <laughs> get out for the Arm next wrestle. one." Yeah. Yeah. Salty Dogs Rumble. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> We'll do like uh, we'll do like Joker, and then throw down some pull sticks and say, "Yeah, I've only got one opening." <laughs> yeah, uh, Pastor Dion Gates. He was on episode fifteen and episode seventeen of season one, talking yeah. about vulnerability and discipleship. Those were good episodes. So yeah. I would suggest if you haven't listened to those, pause the podcast. It's a strong suggestion. Strong. Suggestion. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Go back, take a listen, get mm-hmm. a get a feel for Dion and his and his wisdom, and you will want to come back to this episode. It's true. 
It's good stuff. Dion? What's been going on, man? Yeah. Tell us what's happening. Tell us some stuff. Tell us real mm. quick. Stuff, Dion. Tell us mm. what's happening at stuff. Mending Place, and mm. tell us what's happening at World Impact, because last time we yeah. talked to you, big changes for you, brother. Well, I've retired uh, since I was last on the show. I've retired from law enforcement 17 years, uh, Cedric County Sheriff's Deputy, done, in the books. A uh, new chapter opened up. Crime went up, didn't it? Crime, <laughs> yeah, there's been an uptick. I was noticing yeah, that. Yeah, it's getting a little bit, you know, <laughs> like roguish in like, the downtown. Man, area. Officer Gates is off the force. <laughs> it's on like Donkey Kong. Yeah, Mount exactly. up, son. They were at your retirement party. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. They were celebrating, too. That's they true. were ready, bro. <laughs> I'm, I'm For he's old. a jolly good fellow. <laughs> we're about to go hit this liquor store. You can hear like the bracelets or handcuffs clanking in the back. <laughs> No, yeah, I'm, I'm done. I'm happy to be uh, have served the community, and I'm uh, just celebrated nine years with Mending Place. Uh, our anniversary was last Sunday, so man, tell us where people can find Mending Place online. Uh, yeah, just check us out at Mending Place. That's M E N D I N G Place dot com, uh, Mending Place dot com. You can check us out. Uh, you can also uh, there you'll find all other resources and messages and so on and so forth on the website. But yeah, so I'm I'm excited about that. I am now the new city director for World Impact, uh, Wichita, and I've just gotten that role since April. And so I'm just trucking along, doing what I got to do. Nice. What's the URL for World Impact? World Impact dot org. <clears throat> Yes. I would hope org. I would hope you would know. I would hope I would know. Yeah, I was like, is it com or org? Is, yeah, dot org. Yeah. Yes, Dion, Dion and I are neighbors now. We're living on the same street. Same street. We're both on market right here in the heart of Wichita, Kansas. Yeah. He's just right up the road. Wow. I'm going to come borrow some milk one day. Hey. L lend me some sugar. Ketchup. I am your neighbor. <laughs> Ketchup and sugar. <laughs> you know That's what's up. So, so Dion, I just, I want to give him thanks on the air. I hit him up like yesterday. I'm like, bro. Can you record a podcast tomorrow at 6.30? Mm -hmm. And he's like, yeah, let's do it. And so I was. he asked me if the Lord had something stirring on my heart. And I was like, well, what's he putting on yours? So I threw it back at him. Well, that's unfair because <laughs> I would have hoped or suspected that you probably had a theme. And then I was like, well, I don't want to say what my thoughts are because I don't want to sway anything. I would have been like, well, what, 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 were, what were you thinking? And then you told me and I'd be like, that's what I was thinking. And then we like, <laughs> yeah, right. No, that's what, done, that's what I was hoping that's to talk about. <laughs> That's, yeah, right. So so tell me a little bit about uh, the topic for today and maybe why you chose that. And then we can just go ahead and dive in. You can take it where you want it. Oh, yeah, I appreciate it. Well, I hope everyone out there in listening land will will kind of resonate with this. Uh, the intention at the end of the day is that uh, we would be more in tune with God's presence and uh, the benefits of being in relationship with him, uh, the tangible presence of God, like God actually lives and dwells within us. So that's giving you the end game before we really get started. But just here the last couple of weeks, I've been just thinking about, you know, what is it that uh, as a Christian, what are some of the advantages of having a relationship with the Lord, you know, in his presence is, you know, one of the things that sometimes we want to know more scripture. Are we doing the do's and the don'ts? And we've got a whole bunch of list of things we want to check. But one of the one small to me, it's a simple benefit is the fact that, you know, once we come into a relationship, I've asked God to come and live inside of me. But I was thinking about that. And was it what it looked like it, as it relates to the Old Testament and how you and I pastor churches, we know believers and non-believers and what is it that's different between believer to believer? So now if he lives in me, he lives in you, why is it that sometimes I can see things transforming your life, things happening in your life, the benefits of his His presence in your life where I may not see it in other people's lives? And I've often found that kind of just troubling at the same time, like mysterious, like I could be in the same church. I preach Sunday to the people in the pews. I see one life sitting on the one pew that's being transformed and the other life that's sitting in right next to the other person and there's nothing happening. That's an interesting thought process. You know, why does that happen? You know, if, if I believe that both people who I may be ministering to are saved, then why is the, what's going on with the, with the presence of God? What's the hindrance? In my opinion, there's, there's a stopgap. So I jumped in, um, uh, I was in looking at scripture and I found something I thought was kind of unique and kind of uh, something that pricked my interest. And I'm going back into the Old Testament, taking everybody back there. And we're going to talk about the Ark of the Covenant. For those of you who may be listening, you're unfamiliar with the Ark of the Covenant. It was this this box, this wooden box that was overlaid with gold. 
that was uh, probably no bigger than your average size laundry basket, like a two or three bushel size laundry basket, had a gold lid on it with two angel's wings that kind of pointed at each other. And it was believed that the actual presence of God, the Shekinah of God, uh, is was, was placed right there as the children of Israel were using this as uh, their holy of holies piece of furniture that it, it was, was it was god's place of dwelling because god he's always made a, a dwelling place among his people right so at it. that point in redemptive history if you will god chose to give his have his presence with the ark with the yeah with the physical piece of furniture right yes yeah where you and i today we are the actual temple of the Holy Ghost as it relates to the New Testament. But I think what we can learn here from uh, this particular story is, is that there's some, some challenges. So uh, the children of Israel in first Samuel chapter seven, uh, one through two verses one through two, we see the ark of God being resting at a place, a guy by the name of Abinadab, uh, his house now becomes the resting place for the ark just for the sake of time. We won't go into all the reasons and how that Ark got there because it's a pretty long story, but the Ark of God is no longer at Jerusalem. It's no longer uh, at the uh, tabernacle. It's it's now been placed at an individual's house, a family like a you know like my house, like your house. And uh, while it's there, it's not there just for like a day or two for someone else to come pick it up. But the scripture says that the the Ark rested there for twenty years. Now I want you to think about that. I mean, the presence of God for the entire people, the nation uh, is there resting uh, in your house. I was uh, making fun of this. It'd be like you having the nuclear codes like in your 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 drawer, your sock drawer. <laughs> you know what I mean, it's like <laughs> like somehow the nuclear codes are now yours. You're holding on to them and you don't think anything of it until you start thinking like, wow, this is like the same ark that was with the children of Israel as they wandered through the wilderness, the pillar of fire, the the cloud by day. Uh, this is, this is it. It's there now at Abinadab's house. And it was there for not only a few days, but 20, 20 years. That's 240 months. That's kind of like a prison sentence. That's how they do it. When you're in the courtroom, <laughs> they measure your time with months, not days or years. Right. So, I, I, tr I what I did is I looked at that and then I ran into something as I kept reading. So we move forward, fast forward to second Samuel chapter six, and you'll see that David, uh, under his rulership, he says, where is the ark? I'm going to get it. Now you need to know that Kirjath Jerim is 10 miles away from Jerusalem. So where the ark had rested with Abinadab's house, this is 10 miles. I mean, Wichita is wider than 10 miles. So something being 10 miles away is not that far away. But in this day and age, you could imagine that if something was to going to happen, people would know about it because it just wasn't that far. Uh, David in second Samuel chapter six, he decides to go get the ark and Saul didn't want it during his whole leadership. David says, okay, now that I'm king, I'm going to go get it. He gets ready to go get it, but there's an issue. They put it on a couple of calves or cows, and then it it ends up falling, and Uzzah, uh, Uzziah, I'm sorry, puts his hand up and touches it. The Lord kills him, and boom, David is immediately afraid of the ark. Uh, and he says, listen, I can't take this thing with me. So somewhere between Kirjath Jerim and Jerusalem, this 10 mile journey, there's an issue. The ark is, there's a diversion. The ark is then taken to another guy's house named Obed-Edom. So if we just take for, for a moment and look at these two houses, we've got Abinadab's house, Obed-Edom's house. Abinadab had the ark for 20 years. Obed-Edom, as we look at the scripture, we go down from 2 Samuel chapter 6, verses 1 through 12. He has the ark for 90 days. 90 days versus 240 months. Three months versus 240 months. If you guys are mathematicians, that's going to be about 1%. Obed-Edom had it for 1% of the time that Abinadab did. But the scripture says that Obed-Edom's house was so blessed in that 90 days that word got out and that the king was told, King David, hey, something's going on at Obed-Edom's house, man. I mean, rock star type stuff is just happening in that his whole house. And I started thinking what happened differently at Obed-Edom's house that in 90 days he couldn't keep it to himself. But for 240 months Nothing happens at Abinadab's house that we can see in scripture. Hmm. 
And so I started thinking about the people that sit in the pews, people who say that they're Christians, people who, who the Holy Spirit dwells in, people who live the life of a Christian. And we say, well, what's the difference between these two folks? And I would say, just quickly getting to the point that when I see the story in 1 Samuel with Abinadab and his son, I see them keeping a very compartmental life that we often sometimes do. God, you can have this room, but you can't go in here. Uh, you can come in the house or you can come into my life, but I will refuse to allow you to deal with my marriage. I refuse to allow you to deal with my finances. I'll refuse for you to be Lord overall. You can just save, but you can't be Lord. Does that make sense what I'm saying? Yeah. And so that's the real challenge I see between these two houses. But one is con what Abinadab's son was asked to do was to guard the ark. But when we see, when we go into Obed-Edom's house, we don't see any of that fear. David was first fearful. He was afraid. And then he was displeased. And so when we're afraid, displeased, and guarded, it prevents us from really living into all the fruitfulness that God would want to do in our life, in our relationships. Those are hindrances. Those are barriers. So you could have him on board, but there still could be limits to what God would want to do in your life based on your perspective of him. Are you afraid of God? Many of us are afraid that, man, God just is a, he's waiting to blop us. You know, every time we make a mistake, he's ready to punish, kill, get at us. You know, we make a state mistake. And this is evident in these two stories where one was being guarded where the other one, I think, was really using as a guiding force for all areas of life. Oh, what I was going to say that I noticed is that word guard. And it said that he had it and he was guarding it. So mm -hmm. looking at mm -hmm. looking at it as something um, to be guarded, to be maybe even hoarded, mm -hmm. just seeing it as an object that doesn't need to fall into the hands of the wrong person versus actually realizing that the presence of the of of God is in your household. Yes. Right. And that yeah. he said that he would dwell in that ark and that right. And that you could actually engage with mm. the creator God versus just guard this piece of furniture. So it's seeing one seeing it as an inanimate object mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. that is valued in in some regard. And then I think the how it doesn't say specifically, but I feel like maybe they engaged it a little bit more yeah. in, a, in a real way through through a place of faith. Yeah. That it, well, the scripture says that God is no respecter of persons. And so I, I have to hold on to that because if he's that way in the New Testament, he's the same in the old yesterday, today and forever. He's the same. So if that's a principle that's true, then he wouldn't do for Obed Edom, but wouldn't do for Abinadab. Mm -hmm. He won't do for Dion, but then do for Jason. You understand what I'm saying? So, right. so when we see that, we, I, I just, I, I'm just pricked by it. Now, here's something that was interesting. So in my study, I get to looking through some, some just, you know, you look at commentaries and you figure out all kinds of things about culture. In the ancient rabbinical writings, it's believed. Now check this out. I don't know. This is not in the scripture. So this is just what was passed down in some ancient rabbinical writings. That the reason that they knew that Obed-Edom had been blessed or was being blessed in such a way and he couldn't keep it secret is that Obed-Edom has eight sons. He's got eight daughter-in-laws. And it was believed that in the in each month that the ark was there, that each one of the daughter-in-laws had two babies. What? I'm so, yeah, exactly. It just is like stupid. Like that does that's impossible. Right. Right. But wouldn't that sound kind of accurate though? If God is in it, the impossible becomes possible. Becomes possible, right. And it'd be something that's so far fetched. It's common to man to have babies. But the fruitfulness, it goes all the way back to the command in the garden to be fruitful and to multiply, that if God's presence was there, that then that would be happening. Right. That we'd be living into the, the, the command from the very beginning. So you can imagine the house just exploding. Right. That you got eight daughter-in-laws and each one of them having babies, 16 brand new grandbabies every month. That's like a grenade of babies you going off inside that house. You're talking about a grenade. <laughs> I mean, there was a lot of intimacy and... <laughs> And delivering of babies. So, yeah. <laughs> so, so maybe you're taking it this way, but you, you, you took it back to Genesis and that initial mandate by God to be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth, subdue it to rule and reign. Right. Yes. And so then this rabbinical writing is talking about how there would have been um, fruitfulness in children during the time that the presence of the Lord was there in that household. Exactly. And it would have been a supernatural multiplication of family. So then what do we see happen on the day of Pentecost? 
when the presence of the Lord fills a group of people, yes. you see a church born, and then you see that the Lord added to their num their number daily, and so then there's a there's a giving of the Spirit of God, the presence of God comes and enters, mm -hmm. and then the mm -hmm. church is uh, the people of God are restored back to the original mission, yes, but not just physically, but now spiritually. That's okay to grow the family of Christ. Come on, I mean right? that's where we we see the pattern played out again and again that when the presence of God is there left unhindered and unchecked when we're not compartmental, when we're not guarded, when we're not displeased or offended or fearful of God. And he's allowed to move as he sees fit in our life. We're, it's just not that we're running parallel with the Holy Spirit, but our life is intersecting with him. You know, every area is intersecting with him. That is to me symbolic of what we see his promise being in the garden. And then it's lived out and played out again and again, even in our life today, because he lives in us. So the presence of God is what brings about fruitfulness in our life, right? We all, we seem to always go back and I'll let Casey talk about this because is it John 14 where it talks about abiding or is that John 15, where is it? John 15 abiding? Mm. And that's mm. where fruitfulness comes from mm -hmm. being in the presence of abiding. Yeah. Abiding. Well, <clears throat> and I, I don't know why I just, found this really interesting, but, uh, he said to guard it, but then we found out real quick on the way back that the, the presence of the Lord doesn't need to be guarded. You <laughs> exactly. know what I mean? Come on. That's good. Well, here's what's interesting too, is because, so the guy, he was guarding it within his household. Mm -hmm. So then when David took it, he still had the mentality of guarding the ark so much so mm. that he had it, it on somebody his life. It cost somebody his life. Oh yeah. And so the reason that that happened, mm. I mean, we, we didn't talk about the reason that uh, Uzzah or Uzziah died, mm -hmm. but it's because he reached out to touch the ark. Mm -hmm. Well, God gave very clear instruction when he told them to build the ark, to put the rings on the side and mm -hmm. to put the poles in and mm -hmm. that they would remain there. And so there's a scripture actually in uh, Chronicles where it says, and the Levi's carried the ark of God with the poles on their shoulders. Mm -hmm. So you've already got the contrast of David sticking on sticking mm -hmm. on a cart with some oxen mm -hmm. versus the Levites who were the servants of God, the priesthood mm -hmm. being obedient to the commandments of the Lord and using the poles. It says, as Moses commanded in accordance with the word of the Lord. Mm -hmm. So their obedience to the word of the Lord and taking the ark with them in the way that he said to do it, it was proper. It was right. And, right. It, and it was obedience in the eyes of the Lord. Right. So then you've got David, who's as a leader, has already set his people up for failure. Set so up. at the first moment of shakiness, guard the ark. And then yeah. Uzziah, Uzziah knows, I need to reach out and grab this. And he's struck dead. Well, you know, that it's so true, Jason. And, and then check this out. Here's a little backstory why they would have been afraid of the ark in the first place. I think it's now appropriate to tell a little bit of that backstory. Are you, are you going to talk about the Indiana Jones movie? <laughs> where they open the heart where the skulls and the faces yeah. just melt yeah. off yeah. face it's, melting hey, presence listen man God was serious about this thing <laughs> I mean they had lost the ark in a battle to the Philistines yeah the Philistines then this is where the new ark idea the new put it on a cart and have it come in the Philistines don't know what to do with it they got hemorrhoids they got mice there's a whole bunch of things going on because this ark is with them and they're being tormented by the presence of God and does the idol, Bible say they have hemorrhoids it's emrods but if you look at it it, it it goes down. They couldn't sit down. Interesting. <laughs> God is serious, right? He knows how to get to you. He knows how to deal with you. Right? <laughs> so, <laughs> and then when they brought it up and he started destroying all their idols too. Yeah, they put it in the they put it in the temple of Dagon and he tipped him over, on, cut his they, hands off. They took yeah. the ark and God was like, "You go learn yeah, today. Go learn a lesson. Here's a lesson for you, right? But that goes to show you just about what His presence does for an unbeliever. You know what I mean? Versus a believer. If yes, right. a whole nother story, right? But it's let's, a, it's a fearful thing to fall in the hands hey, of a living there we God. Go. Okay. So say, challenging, was, right? Yeah. So they end up putting the, they put the ark. This is the Philistines. They want to give it back. They're of course not going to bring it back and you know, like, Hey, here it is. They, so they put it on an, an ark. They put it on a new cart, not like the Levites were supposed to. They put it on a new cart. They were the first ones to put it on a cart. The first ones to put it on the back of cows that had just given birth. They were testing God. God, if this is really, if you really want it back, then You'll make these brand new mother cows leave their 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 children and go a certain right. way. That's right. I remember that. Okay, so they went. Nonetheless, God did it. He takes it to a, a field in Israel and the, the ark comes to a rest. The people who find it, they're happy. Wow, the ark came back to us. They open it up, which you shouldn't do, and it kills 50,000 men. Yikes. 
So everyone's afraid. Like, hey, come and get this. Nobody yeah. wants yeah, it. Right. right. Nobody wants the presence of God. This but is they had forgotten what the Lord had promised about exactly. his presence among them. Exactly. They lost it. So then when David puts it puts it on a cart, he was mimicking mm. he was mimicking what he had saw the Philistines do when they brought it in. Right? Like Someone had said like, yeah, they put it on a card and it was fine, but that wasn't, it had worked. It was okay, but it wasn't God's way, you know. And it was David's way. That's yeah. good and not God, right? And so. it was David's way, you know what yeah. I mean? I guess oh, that's yeah. kind of a, that's kind of a message in itself about, you know, leadership, doing things your own way and costing people, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, mishandling the presence of God, you know, yeah. and <clears throat> having your own, uh, Having your own thoughts, your own, uh, what's what's it called? Your own plans for it, right? It's very serious. And then people get around it and mishandle it, and it causes causes a lot of hurt and injury. What's tripping me out is that that presence that was in that ark, that terrifying death presence, you know, mm -hmm. your death giving presence mm -hmm. to those who mishandled it is the same presence that lives inside of us. And so, Boom. what's the you know. Like where where can we go from there? Because like that's what's really tripping me out. Like because that, that same that same power is now living within us, and we are arcs essentially, right? Yeah. Of the covenant. Well, I think it just goes to show <laughs> you the scripture says that we're fearfully and wonderfully made. Mm -hmm. I mean, you think about what we're saying here that the presence that brooded over the water in the very beginning, the same presence when God is saying, "Let us." This is. I mean, God lives inside of you. Hmm. I mean, that's, I mean, that's what can contain him. You know what I mean? For him to say that I'm going to live inside of you, that's a. It, that's, was, it was blasphemy to the, to the old culture, wasn't it? Well, yeah, no one could imagine that God would live inside sinful men. You know what I mean? And, but God is progressive though, how he's taking the people on a journey. He's in a box some of us at some point in time in history would say that he dwelled in the book, the Bible, and it's more than that. And now he dwells in the bosoms of men. He dwells in the heart. He's, he's progressive. You see him in where he's, he's among the people when they're leaving Egypt. He's upon the people in the book of Judges. You see him coming upon right. folks. He's and the Spirit of the Lord came, came upon. upon. Yep. And now after Jesus, he's better that I go because now he's going to be in. Right. It's just progressive. And, and I, I think that a progressive dwelling. Yeah. Right. So to speak. And then when you look at um, it, I think it's in Isaiah. It's a, it's a, um, it's either prophecy or it's in revelation where it talks about, mm -hmm. well, in revelation, we see God actually being among his people, but I, I believe there's the, the prophecy that says, and then I'll, I'll be, uh, I'll be their God and they'll be my people yes, and he'll yeah. be with them. And yeah, right mm -hmm. present with them but then we also see that actually fleshed out <laughs> literally when when god becomes the right yeah, jesus yeah. in the flesh mm -hmm. um and then his name is emmanuel which is god with us and so i think from the beginning we see that god has always desired to dwell among his people and he's done it in different shapes and forms mm -hmm. he did it in the garden as he would walk among the garden mm -hmm. he called out for adam and mm -hmm. eve sin mm -hmm. he he had to cast them out of his mm -hmm. presence, mm -hmm. close off the garden of Eden. So then Adam and Eve are cast out and then the world is, is cursed because the presence of God was no longer there in, in that, in that form continually. And so then, yeah, he, he comes as a, a pillar of fire and a cloud and then he dwells in a, in a box, so to speak, but then he comes as Christ and then Christ leaves, but then he comes as the Holy spirit. Yeah. And so it's always, 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 I want to be with you. And I think that's yeah. a very important message to the people of God is that he desires to, he wants to be with us. And he is time and time again, finding a way to bring his presence among people. In uh, John 14, 16, Jesus says, I will ask the father and he will give you another helper yeah. that he may be with you forever. Right. Right. And I think the people listening to that would have been like with us forever. Yeah. Like because they're in, in their history. The presence was there. Mm -hmm. The presence would leave. The presence was there. And then Ichabod, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The, the presence of the Lord has, has yeah. departed. Has departed. Mm -hmm. And so he's saying, look, all this history, all this exile coming in, coming out, bring, bringing you back in, take like that's going to come to an end because Jesus, 
He's going to pray and then the spirit's going to come and the father will then be with his people forever. And so that's where we're at. in in this, in this mm-hmm. story mm-hmm. is that we have in, in this entire history of everything in the way that God has been dealing with his people and dwelling among them. We now are in this, this era of grace, mm-hmm. this covenant of grace and the Holy spirit comes and lives and dwells inside of us. And now we are the temple of the Holy spirit. There's no more box Mm-mm. There's no more Mm-mm. departing. Mm-mm. There's none of that. It's Mm-mm. it's not. I'm going to come. I'm going to. I'm going to go. I'm going to come. I'm going to go. He's. He says. Uh, also at the Great Commission, he says, "And lo, I am with you even until the end of the age." Until the end of the age. And so this is all about the Father desiring to dwell among His people in mm-hmm. deep intimacy. Yeah, that's amazing. But that's so just, good. That's in time. But then he says, "I'll go to prepare a place for you that where I am, you may be also." I was literally just thinking about that scripture. Yeah. So he's, you know, there's this progression that, because if this was the greatest expression of intimacy, then what would we have at death? So this is just another step before our going into eternity. And this the next, the ultimate level, you know? So, so I I think maybe where I'd like to take this, because I, I think this topic of the presence of God is such if we can grasp and understand and not only, not only understand with our mind, but believe, believe in our heart and, and know and truly understand and live like we believe that the presence of God is with us always. I think that's the answer to your question earlier. You're sitting, you've got two people in a pew next to each other. Mm -hmm. They've both given their lives to the Lord. They've confessed, professed, whatever it is. And you see how the Holy Spirit is so active in someone's mm-hmm. life and maybe it doesn't look as active. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know how to say that mm-hmm. without, you know, I, understand. I don't want to sound legalist or yeah. anything like that, I get where you're coming from. but maybe not as much fruit, that mm-hmm. kind of thing. I think it goes back to the two stories Abinadab and, and Obed-Edom. Obed-Edom. Mm-hmm. And I think Obed-Edom realized the presence among him and engaged it. And I think it's the same thing with the people of God. Either they're engaging the living God, the spirit Mm -hmm. in them, or they're not. Mm -hmm. For some, it's the Holy Spirit, God, the Father, the Christ, the Messiah. Mm -hmm. Jesus is still some far off figure. He's up there and I'm down here and I'm trying to attain to, Mm -hmm. and scripture tells us all over the place, he's with us. We're in him. Mm -hmm. He's in us. We're seated with him in the heavenlies the spirit dwells and lives within us so there is a an unbreakable um it there is a there is a a closed chasm right which there's no more chasm yeah so the bridge between man and god Mm -hmm. has been built by the blood of christ on the cross and so we have communion with the father and so i think the difference is some people engage with the lord in the spirit and then some don't yeah I and mean, some realize and believe what they have in them and who they are. And some don't. It's a strange, it's a strange cycle. We see it. We, I mean, I think it's always been that way, of course, but uh, I don't know. I guess we could talk about the how to, to help people become aware of it, but. But also at the same time, you got to think about, okay, so Jesus was a son of God and I'm not, I'm, I'm just, I'm thinking here. Think out loud, brother. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, when we look at somebody, because certainly they said to Jesus when he was on the cross, yo, if you really are the son of God, then come up down off the cross. So in that act, in that aspect, what they were seeing and what he didn't do was he didn't come off the cross. Right. So in their mind, right, perceiving that or even saying saying that to the son of God. Right. Like if we see something, but clearly God did the earth, like an earth shaking, heaven shaking right. work that was done there that nobody could really realize at that time. Right. But so I guess I, I don't know, I guess in my mind um, and what, it, you know, the Lord has been speaking to me lately is, you know, uh, everybody, Jesus is the way right mm-hmm. to the father. And there's a scripture uh, it says the everlasting God is, is your dwelling place. It's mm-hmm. like he is the destination. Right. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. so. Uh, Jesus is the path, right? But that path looks different for everybody, but he's still that same path. And all those paths lead to the father, right? right? In the life of a believer, you know, because he's the dwelling place. And so, Mm -hmm. um, when we talk to, or or I guess when we look at things happening in other people's lives, like why is somebody reacting to that, to, to the word given or the presence of God now, but somebody else isn't, you know, but at the same time, there's just, they're in different places on the path, but they're still on the same path. You know what I mean? I, I guess I'm, I'm, 
I, and I, I agree also with, you know, realizing like what you have and, and things like that. But I think that's a, that's a, a Holy spirit given thing too. Cause I can remember a lot of times where I was sitting in pews where, you know, the presence of God was uh, around me, you know what I mean? But, mm-hmm. and people were really moved, but it just didn't move me for some reason, you know? And I don't, <clears throat> but I don't think that, I mean, and I did have a realization of that, of, you know, or a somewhat realization of, of who he was and, and what he was doing in my life. It's just kind of a, mm. it's a path for everybody, I guess. I don't, I don't know. And I just want to make sure I'm understanding what, what I heard you say. I'm, I'm not saying that it's an emotional expression. Right. I'm saying that fruit, you're talking about fruit. Yeah. I'm not saying that because someone may be crying next to you, you should be crying. Okay. Do you know what I mean? I'm talking about you inside, okay. you know what I mean? Your life, not what you do on a Sunday morning in the pew, you know? I, 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 yeah. 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 It's like, why? So you get a room of, uh, 20 people who all have, who are struggling with, or maybe are in recovery from alcoholism. Mm. And you got some who are still slipping in old ways. And then you've got some who are just completely free. Mm, mm, and so why then fruit then is what we're talking about. I guess so. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. Just, I'm talking about fruit. I, yeah. I want to be clear to the listeners that this is not emotionalism. Yeah. I know. Yeah. It's not, well, so-and-so is more emotional than you during worship. Then they've got more of the spirit moving in their life than you. That's not what we're saying at all. Yeah. Yeah. I just, I just think that, I mean, for the listener, where my heart is concerning all of this is just that, um, people would really truly understand and grasp the truth about who they are and, and, and what the presence of, of God really is. And, and, you know, it's, it's interesting. So let's maybe talk about this just a little bit. Cause you mentioned it, you said I was in a room and with other people and like the presence of God was there. Well, technically the presence of God is always with us mm-hmm. by a spirit in us. Mm-hmm. If we believe that, mm-hmm. but That's then true. there are some people. So like, interestingly, I love this worship song, the Holy spirit. You're welcome here. Yeah. You know, come and essentially we're singing a song and we're inviting the Holy spirit to come. Right. Technically mm-hmm. he's already here. Mm-hmm. So rather than longing for some sort of coming, that is, <laughs> that changes like, what are we waiting for well, versus engaging the truth of the scripture that Christ is, is in it. you. So, so it is you a realization. are the temple. It, that's what I'm trying to figure, yeah. trying to figure out. Like, do we realize don't Paul said this all the time. Don't you know? Yes. And that's what he did in yeah. Corinthians. He's yeah. like, you guys are over here sleeping with moms and stuff. <laughs> don't you know that your body is the, the temple. temple of the Holy spirit? <laughs> I'm not going to be thinking about sleeping with some woman that's not my wife yeah. if I realize that the presence of God is here with me all the time. But they were also believers, though. You know, yeah, it's they, crazy. It was a church that he was writing to. You and know. They were, it was full of the gifts. So wouldn't that? Be, so I guess it's really an access problem. You know what I mean? What you're accessing, I guess, what, to realizing access. I, you know, and that's. I think that's where, like, I I want to get on one is because I want people to know, like. I mean, you don't, you don't need the right synthesizer in the background. You don't, (laughs) you don't need the faux glory of the Lord coming in from the smoke machine behind the curtain. Like you don't need, you know what I'm saying? Like, I know I'm not saying those things are bad in themselves. (laughs) What I'm saying is, yeah, because a lot, uh, the synth has done a lot, bro. Dion's like, man, we got (laughs) to, let me see if I can still return that smoke machine to Amazon. Cause I was like, I got a warranty on it. No, but you know what I'm saying? Like, I think sometimes we try and like create these optimal environments and there's something to be said about environment like i'll turn the lights down and put some candles on but what i'm saying is like it i think the presence of the god is presence of god is not something we should wait to happen but it's something that's waiting for us to engage in well and i'll jump in i mean casey you do worship so you know stop me if if i'm getting off here but i do think there's something to be said about atmosphere and presence because we are human and we just have our senses right so i get that uh, but I will say that in that song specifically, Jason, that we were mentioned, Come Holy Spirit, uh, I've, we've sang that song a couple of times here lately, and I've been asking people who are saved, God-fearing people, Holy Spirit lives inside of them, asking them to lay hands on themselves, prophesy to themselves that not that he's not in there, but like a Benadab's house, you can take the next room. You can take the next room. You could take the front yard. You can get in the garage, the backyard, you can have it all. Until it's Versus, an all-encompassing Yeah, thing. so when me saying, like, come Holy Spirit, I'm saying, hey, I'm opening myself up to areas that I normally have kept t- 
to myself and not allowed you to influence and impact. Not saying that he needs to come afresh or for the first time. Right. And so I often I, differentiating that and also. No, that's able, good. That's really good because that that you're taking the words of the song and making them applicable to to something different. Like I'm thinking of, right. oh, we're waiting for the presence of God to come. To do something. So yeah, come yeah. on it's versus like, you personally inviting the spirit to move in areas right. where you've not allowed it before. Yeah, and you know yeah. what? And that, that's, that's that, a good, it's that's a, a good. Like yeah. in worship and stuff like, man, that's a dance, dude. Like the spirit's already dancing. You know what I mean? And all we're, all we're invited to dance with him. You know what I mean? And I think, and I, and I was just wondering too, you know, why sometimes people, some, uh, Worship leaders have a gift of leading people into the presence of God. Because I remember right. one time, and Jason and I were up here worshiping, and dude, I I don't know what happened, but like I just I just broke and I started crying, and I like you know because I, I was just so tired of of being. It was like a, it was like I just felt falseness in me. And I just broke. I felt like I just wanted to slam my guitar on the ground. You know what I mean? But I just stopped in the middle of the song. It's like I can't do this anymore, right? And and then all of a sudden this move of God happened, you know what I mean? And I'm not saying it's about me. I'm just trying to, I'm just trying to uh, paint a picture here about, about like why people were some, and, I, and I'm wondering like, why is that? Because we're talking about how, how can you realize, but why what, but you, you know, the presence of God is with us, but why does it take somebody that's gifted in bringing the presence of God, I guess, to manifest right. it like so, light, you know, right. in, 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 into people's minds no. and, and oh my gosh, he is here, you know what I mean? Right. And then all of a sudden yeah. he's well, like, oh, yeah. well now we're all accessed. Thing, you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. It's just a, so I was going to say, it's like that, that statement, I think sometimes obviously within Christianity, there's a lot of like semantics. What do you really mean by that? That's you true. know, like, That's yeah. true. like, what do you mean? You know, what do you mean church? Right? right. What do you, what do you mean? You're inviting me to church. That didn't make sense to me. Right. You know what I'm saying? Exactly. So anyways, um, lead, you have people who are leading other people into the presence of God. <laughs> it, so I think technically, what we're saying is that, yeah, people who are gifted in leading people's focus onto what is already right. reality and right. true. Right. And that, and, right. and that goes with like, man, keep your, keep your, your mind on things above, you know what I mean? And mm -hmm. I think that sometimes when we come into the, into the place of worship <clears throat> that we're, that we're so focused on other things yeah, that good. we're like, man, why, why isn't the presence? Well, the presence is here. You just need to elevate your focus. Right. right? I was going to say that yourself. these kinds of people who do this, they have a gift for the shift. I just made that up. Whoa. Whoa. You know what I'm saying? Hashtag but, boom, gift, for hashtag the shift. gift for the shift. <laughs> yeah. Just don't forget the F guys. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> gift for the shift. It, it's shifting your focus. Right. Right. It's let us set our minds on things above. Let us set our hearts on things above. And oftentimes the wheat gets away from me and I've not set. And you know what? I've not it. done the setting. That's so I have true. to do the shifting. Yeah. Good. And you know what? You're right, man. And, uh, uh, and I'll, and I, this is something that I always talk about, man, like about how just bombarded on every side we are and the, and the battle for, for the enemy is in our mind. You know what I'm saying? It is in the mind. That's what it be transformed by the renewing of your mind. There's a, there's something about the mind. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the best, one of the best tools in war is propaganda. Oh. You know what I'm saying? So we're talking yeah. about lies and we're talking about our focus getting off, man. That's why he's saying, man, when you're walking the path, don't look to the left or to the right. Don't you right. keep your focus straight ahead. And so right. there's something to be said about focusing and mindset. And so I guess that's kind of what we're, leading into about the presence of God. That's a mindset. It's a, it's setting you're, and you're right, man. I really like that. I, I wasn't set. So I had to make the shift rather than just being set, staying set. But how hard is it to, to stay yeah. set? Because we're constantly, constantly, constantly bombarded, man. Constantly. It's, it's true. And, um, I'll, I'll never forget this and I've pr probably quoted it 50 times at this point, but Christine Smith, she taught at the source months ago and she was talking about intimacy with Christ and the statement that she used about connecting with the father and in intimacy. She said, all you have to do is, is give your time and attention, mm. just turn. And she used this phrase, just turn into it. And that's what that means. Let's, let's just, let's look. I lift my eyes up to the Hills. Where does my hope mm. come from? Mm. I, I, sh I mean, shifted where, where was he looking down? man, I'm so, I'm so messed up or man, this is so terrible or all this stuff's going on. You know, I'm not, I'm not feeling like things are going my way. 
I lift my eyes up to the, there was a shifting, a looking. And so that's what we do in worship. So we do in, yeah. in, it's, in it's, our services is we, we look up and it is, it's, it's giving, it's giving everything, you know what I mean? And so we're talking about intimacy with the father that's communion, you know what I'm saying? And so yeah. I, and I, some people might not like this, but I say it anyway, because this is what I think about. Like, okay. When, when intimacy between two people, okay, what is it? Okay. And why is it so sacred? It's somebody giving themselves to you completely and you giving yourselves completely to them. So now we see Christ has given everything to us completely. And so in order to, 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 to fulfill that, com that communion with you, between us and, and God, everything we have is to be given we in give, that moment in communion give it and in intimacy. You Love know the what Lord I mean? your God with all. All, give it all. all and so all. just, and I mean, even intimacy between two people in the marriage covenant, you know, is, is a picture of intimacy with God. It's a giving true, of right. everything to each other. Right. Paul says, I, I'm not talking about marriage, but I'm talking about the mystery of the gospel. Boom. Mm. Right. I mm -hmm. mean, it's all to point to the gospel, mm -hmm. to that deep love. Yep presence, man. It's a, it's a powerful thing. I want to read the scripture. Yeah. I had a few things that just kind of popped out to me sure. in, um, Psalm 16, 11 says, you will make known to me the path of life in your presence is fullness of joy mm -hmm. in your right hand. Black there are more. pleasures forevermore. Mm -hmm. forevermore. And so, yeah, I just think that, I mean, the, the biggest thing that we can take away and, th and this is where, like, I, I feel like I've talked about this before, but I have to keep kind of harping on myself concerning this because I've shifted, there's that word again, I've shifted the way that I, that I approach the father in prayer. Mm. And typically I, I want to use the, I want to use the word grovel. Mm. Like I used to approach the, th so scripture tells in Hebrews, therefore approach the throne with boldness. with boldness. We can boldly approach to receive mercy and grace yeah. in our time of need. But I would grovel to the throne with my head down as though mm. I, I knew I did something wrong. Like, oh, though yeah. you caught me, God. Mm. So here, I don't want to look you in the face. Mm -hmm. Right. And so I'm like inching my way towards the father in fear. There's that fear thing again. Mm -hmm. Right. Am I fearful of the presence That's or am it. I embracing it because I know yeah. in his presence, fullness of joy. So now. It, it, instead of going to the Lord and I'm like, oh, no, I haven't done this. I haven't read my Bible. I haven't prayed. I looked at that stuff. I treated my oh, yeah. wife poorly. Yeah. And you, yeah. I mean, it's good to confess. Yeah. You should confess sins, but you go boldly. You go boldly as a son and you say, Father, I've sinned and I've sinned against you alone. We get the picture of that through David as well. Right. I've sinned. I've sinned against you alone. And here I am. And so, man, and then you receive that love and you get into the presence because that's where fullness of joy is. Right. And that's, and that's another realization thing, man. And how inundated we become with, you know, the, the God that, like you said, you started out like the God just wants to smash us and destroy us. And yeah. that's been because of the mishandling, the mishandling of leadership and the mishandling of pastors and that's teachers true. telling people that you're going to go to hell and God is blah, blah, this and this and that, man. No wonder people are scared and, you know, people don't want to be part of Christianity because that's the way we believe. Well, okay, whatever, you know, but that's, it's, it's a, it's a, again, it's a, it's a shift in your mind frame and in your realization because you coming, what's truth. It's a truth thing too. So implementing truth. And I've been trying to do that a lot more late, lately in my prayer life is like, okay, what do I know is true? This is how I feel right now, but right. what does his word say? And what does the living word say? You know, and what right. am I hearing? What is truth? Because that supersedes any truth that I think I have in my situation. Situation because there's always that greater truth, right? And so, like you said, oh man, I used to come to the, the father just being like, oh, you know, like really skittish, not want to be around. And it, and it is a terrifying thing. Oh, but the fact is, is that Jesus did something that we still are trying to figure out, you know what I mean? And we'll still be trying to figure it out for eternity when we get yeah. when we get there. But he is the dwelling place, not heaven, you know what I mean? So when we get there and we're finally in the presence of fullness all the time, you know what I mean? We're going right. to realize, you know yeah. what I mean? And so there's it's no night. Yeah, there's no night. No because day, he is because yeah. in him is light. no darkness yeah. at all, man. There's no shadow. Nothing. That's pretty wild. All right. So, Dion, I'm going to hit you with the question, brother. So last, uh, not. Yeah, actually, last episode, we talked about the slave men mentality versus uh, the son mentality. But we kind of got into the same conversation about the presence of the Lord and, and intimacy with the Father. And we suggested this book called Practicing the Presence of God 
by Brother, Brother Lawrence, Lawrence, and it's a free PDF. And so we actually put it in our show notes last two weeks ago, and we'll do it again because I think it's important. But so, um, how do you practice the presence of God in your life, Dion? That's good. I was going to uh, get into some more practical things because I think that's good for the listeners. Uh, Absolutely. Uh, you know, one thing I know that that hindered my presence seeking the intimacy seeking and allowing God into areas that I was intimidated, fearful, uh, ashamed of was because I was a, I was more concerned about what Casey mentioned earlier about more the emotional stuff, you know, like I'm a man, I don't feel like crying. I don't, you know, it, those things were hindrances. Those were hurdles for me initially practicing because I didn't, I didn't trust necessarily. I may have been thinking like, well, what does that look like? God's presence, me giving him my way, his way, him having his way. Uh, is that scary? What is he going to make me do? And that's, you know, no, seriously, the, yeah. those, those are all emotional right. things that, that kind of prevented me from saying, okay, God, I can trust you uh, in this area too, as well. What I do personally though, uh, once you, you get past that fear uh, for me, that fear, getting past that fear, I, I, I sit alone. I do some things very intentionally because the world gets so loud uh, and we made very clear, I think just in our, a few minutes ago about that. It's not that things have changed with his presence in me, but my focus has gotten off. Yeah. it's it, And real quick, the reality of who he is and where he is yeah. has not changed. Not a question. And I've also often heard someone say, well, you know, sometimes you might feel like God is far off, but who really moved? Exactly. Come you on. You know, that's yeah. good. Go ahead. So I stay focused by one. I ride a lot without uh, the radio on. This is very practical for me. In your, in your car, in just shut car. the radio off. Yeah. Just shut it off. Yep. And I just ride. Uh, so I, silence. Silence is one, you know, uh, I catch that time a lot where it allows me to think, ponder, uh, and have some sidebar conversations with him to me that are outside of my normal prayer time, my normal. Okay. I'm dedicating this first hour of the day, the first 30 minutes of the day or whatever it is to you. Uh, those sidebars to me are so rich because a lot of times they're really the the culmination of the first prayer or of the first time I may have introduced myself in the day and say, Hey God, you know, but what, but what you're doing in those situations. And I've talked to someone about this before because they asked me if I had like a quiet time. And, and so I said, well, if you ask me if I do the same thing every day at the same time, yeah, yeah. I don't. But oh. I can tell you what I do. I'm always talking to the Lord. Mm -hmm. I might be mm -hmm. walking down the street. I might be sitting at my computer by me in my car, mm -hmm. yeah, whatever it may be. I'm, I'm talking to him because I don't need a, a place or space. It's good to have them. Right. You can have a sacred spot. Jesus had the mountain. Yeah. But he was also out in the marketplace looking up at heaven and saying, for your glory, father, I'm going to do this. I know you hear me. So yeah. he's right. Right. Yeah. He's not off by the mountain. So yeah, I think yeah. when you start having those sidebar conversations, man, that's just practical living in intimacy with the father and always communicating with him versus yeah. thinking it has to look a certain way and fit a certain mold. Yeah. And, and I, and I find that to get out of, um, like the, like we, we have a tendency, especially new Christians to fall into a law based mm -hmm. thing. Like I have to do right. And mm -hmm. it's very common for, for new believers and cause it, and it's very common again for old believers too. There's mm -hmm. a lot of that going on, but I found, uh, one of the, the more profound things in my life that's been happening is just like, man, uh, living thankful, you know what I mean? And just be thankful and to try to let thankfulness Gratitude. be, mm -hmm. be r rather than saying, thank you, living, thank you. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, and, uh, also another thing, um, that I've been doing practically in my life is trying to see him in everything because he is in everything. Okay. So the presence, we're talking about the presence always being with us. Well, he is clearly in, in everything, you know, and, uh, trying to see him in everything rather than, and I meditate and pray in the mornings as well. Like, and, uh, you know, really to, 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 to center and to set, to set my focus for that day, to set it on Christ and set it on God, but not as a law thing, as a, as a it's principle, a, because, because I know what this day is going to bring for me. It's going to bring craziness and it's so easy to get, to get swayed, you know well, what I mean? Or to you, look left and right when you're walking the path. You and, know? 
Yeah, and don't hear me saying that having a set time and a set place and all that stuff. It's is bad. not. It's not what bad. I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. So you're doing that because you know that he is he sustains you. Right. And if say so if I'm if I don't tap into the source or plug into the source for the day, right? I'm I'm not you're I, out of apart whack, from man. him I can do nothing. I need him. Right. So you may do this every day, but it's because you find pleasure and you and you find right. intimacy and, and, and find power. And you know from that it says that nobody you know hides a light or a lamp underneath a bowl, right? But I find you know back then lamps were with oil and fire. You know what I'm saying? And I, and sometimes our lamps get a little you know we're running out <laughs> running out of a little bit of fire in there. And so that those that that intentional quiet time is an is an honoring thing i think and it's also a time where the the spirit can light that lamp bro so that we can stand out and say yeah. in the middle of the uh, in the middle of the square and say you know i know that you always hear me you know what i mean so right. your lamp is burning and it's burning bright because it it i think in my experience it it kind of it kind of fades and goes it it just all based on on the on the amount of oil that's feeding it and so mm. that that's an oil that's an oil gathering time for me you yeah. know, so I just found that as practical. That's good. And also in the scripture, oil represents the spirit. 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 Yeah. So that's keep your lamp burning, right? And their mm -hmm. lamps burnt out, you know, and, and so you got to keep that oil flowing and it's yeah. just really easy to, to, to kind of, kind of quench that in your life. When yeah. You're not focused, so, Dion, so. you said you do, you, you were on, you were on a path here. You said you sit alone and you, and you, uh, practice silence you got two s's do you have another s for us or what else no, you got brother, going on? i'm not that preachy right now I, <laughs> <laughs> but i will say this uh i i think that we don't know what to do with the good if you look back at the story that we were reading obed edom couldn't keep the good to himself the word got back to the king i mean it'd be like the word getting to the white house you know like man Jason is rocking it, man. I mean, you see what's going on over there in his house? I mean, huge. Yeah, you know, it's like, <laughs> so it's you, man. <laughs> see, uh, or Casey, or anybody, like, right? He'll tweet out hashtag doing it, oh, man. doing it big. Yeah. Bigly. Big. <laughs> there are huge things happen at the Villa Nueva household. That's right. Well, Great. Well, awesome. Well, Great. Uh, Fantastic. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah. I don't Go ahead. I mean, you guys, you guys not getting me sucked into that. Right? I'm just so, kidding. so what I what I see is that most people have a hard time if practicing God's presence sometimes is being able to really just enjoy His goodness. We don't do that well. Yeah. We take we we get ashamed of His goodness. Right. Just as much as we do of our sin. Sometimes. Gosh. Oh man. God's good. Well. Uh, I kind of am embarrassed that he's been that good in my Man, life, you know, yeah. I don't want to tell you how good. I think one of the things that we can do to really practice God's presence is get okay with being blessed, be okay with his, the benefits that come from being in relationship and the intimacy. I think that's important because we have this foreboding jo joy. Like if it's good, then I'm, I can't enjoy the good because I'm Man. waiting for it to get bad or I don't want people to think I'm a goody right. two shoes. That's, that's the, that's covering you know? up the lamp, the lamp with a bowl. It bro. is. It is. And we, we, to practice his presence, I think we should be asking ourselves, what, how am I going to behave when the blessing of the Lord, which happens on my life, makes rich, add no sorrow, can't be hid. How do I behave in that blessed place? Uh, can I really enjoy him? And really, I mean, just one of the practical things I'm going to ask the listeners to do is to find somebody you can share the good with. I think it's easy to find people to weep with you. I think it's harder to find people who want to rejoice sure. with you. Yeah. You think about the parable of the lost stuff that, you know, he had to go find people to rejoice when the sheep and the coin. And it's hard to find mm. people who want to rejoice with you when they don't necessarily experience the exact same thing. I'm sitting in the same pew. God's moving in your life. I can see what, what, how did a Benadab feel? Man, that right. thing was been in my house for 20 years and all of a sudden, 90 days in this house. <laughs> I didn't get blasted. <laughs> Come on, man. I mean, let's be honest. Yeah. Let's be honest. Man, I've been sitting here with 20 years of this thing and he I ain't got no kid. I mean, <clears throat> nothing he, to talk about. He didn't share that Facebook post. He didn't share that, right? <laughs> but I think, I mean, beyond social media, seriously, if something happens to you, you get the business deal. You get the promotion. Talk to somebody. Who man. do you really get a chance to share yeah. it with who won't then see that as an opportunity to be jealous to be frustrated, do you feel like a safe place? Who's your safe place to share God's goodness? If you have that, you need to take full advantage of it. That keeps you grateful in a way that you don't seem braggadocious because people understand that's what should happen to people who are allowing his spirit and his presence to move into every area of their life. Mm. Right. Does that make sense what I'm saying? It does. 
that's practical stuff that I do. So the quiet time and then also the safe place, somebody that I can say, you know what, God's being good to me and I'm not going to allow the fear of tomorrow to sabotage, to eradicate the moment of the joy. You know what I mean? Like, man, the day is really good. Oh shoot, I better be careful because tomorrow I may get, you know, we've got to be able to stay in that place and know that God is, he's for us, you know? And that's a good place. It's a good thing to know, to know that God wants to be good. His plans are good, not evil, that that's a byproduct of his presence. And I'm perfectly okay to enjoy that, you know, and yeah. enjoy, hard. enjoy him, enjoy his presence because in his presence is fullness of fullness joy. of joy, enjoy, <laughs> enjoyment, fullness enjoyment because <laughs> in him is <clears throat> that's right. Man, I just, uh, and there's so much, there's so enjoy much the to Lord, talk about. Bro. Like that's such a, that's such a simple saying, man, but enjoy the, the, Lord. the joy of the and Lord. And you're right, man. Yeah. We're afraid to, we're afraid to enjoy the Lord. We're afraid like, to. Because like, oh, I'm a sinner or I've got you're all this, greedy. I've got all this stuff and you're prideful. But yeah. But think about that in your, in his presence is fullness of joy. You ever seen somebody that's just so happy you don't want to be around them? Yeah. <laughs> Joel Osteen, they used to be that way for me. <laughs> No, I'm serious, man. I used to be like, I can't even stand listening to him. He's just too happy. And then they realized the Holy Spirit checked me and says, no, that's because he's, he's banking and rolling in that area and you're not. And right. I was just really dealing with some jealousy. Ouch. Yeah. But that's yeah. what I'm saying. Like in his presence of fullness of joy, man. We, I don't know if, where you guys stand on Joel Osteen. I'm well, just saying that I just, well, that's, well think about that. Like I, I got it. I, it's paths for everybody, bro. Right. I, I can't judge that man, dude. Yeah. Well, I, I, well, we don't have to get on it, but I don't think he has, it. I think he has a gift of encouragement yeah. and, and yeah, he just, yeah. I mean, he builds the body up through encouragement and thing. just reminds people the goodness of the Lord, which you're talking about doing right now. Yeah. He just doesn't do all the other things that people hold him to. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. But, but what I'm saying is like, have you, <laughs> I'm, never mind. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> think, think about this though. Have you ever, when, when can you remember like the last time that you were, you were like completely joyful, like from head to toe, just giddy, I mean, maybe jumping up and down or dancing or whatever. I mean, there's been times where I've gotten so excited. I'm, I look like a fool. Man. Can you imagine if, if we allowed ourselves to experience or to enjoy Christ as much as he wants us to enjoy him? And then we were filled with joy. How insane we might look to people. You ever, you ever had a, a sports team that won a championship? That's yes. your favorite team? Yes. What happened with you? It's been a while, but I did act crazy. You act like a fool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? But that's, but fast forward, same passage of scripture. David finally gets the ark back and his wife looks out the window and he sees, she sees him acting like that. Right. And she's like, he's, you made yourself a fool. He's like, I'm going to be day. more undignified than I this. I can get even more undignified. And then he never that. slept with her again. She oh. never, she never had a seed. She never bore seed. The Lord cursed her because of that. Wow. Yeah. How about that? A series. So man, we better series. check <laughs> hashtag hashtag check, check your heart, yeah, bro. When yeah. you when you see the joy of the Lord on people, we'll leave people alone, man. You, yeah. you better check yourself. Check your heart because you will get yeah. wrecked. Well, he's in the house. <laughs> Ultimately, what you got to realize, I think, that he's in the house. And when we say that, we're not talking about the church house, but you. He's better in the house. Better is one day in his courts than a thousand elsewhere. But that's it. He's it's wild, house. man. Yeah. So pursue the presence of the Lord. And here's what I'm saying. Jesus promises that those who seek will find those who ask it will be given. And those who knock the door will, will be opened. opened. It mm -hmm. will be not might be mm -hmm. you seek, you will find. Mm -hmm. So talking about seeking the presence of the Lord, it's not something to be found. It's something to be focused on. Mm -hmm. Right. And so we need to, that too. we need to turn and in. And, and that, and that goes to, you know, it's never a question of how far he's willing to lead you. It's how far are you willing to go? You know what I mean? And, and I think that honestly in my life, and, and when you ask the question, like, when's the last time you're joyful? It's like, man, I can't even, I can't even remember. Ezra. And that's not, yeah, yeah, yeah. The but I'm a child. Yeah. yeah. Cause that was a presence giving thing, mm -hmm. you know? Um, but in his presence is fullness of joy. So man, willing to press in and willing to go through whatever and willing to walk through whatever just to get there, you know what I mean? To ascend the mountain to God, right? To his presence, man. What are you willing to go through and what are you, how far are you willing to go? Cause he's and, willing to take you. And are you really willing to allow him to show you the places where you found joy that aren't him and then allow him to deal with those places? Yeah. Oh, that's for, that's <laughs> Next on the Salty Dogs yeah, podcast. Yeah. Humility. Let me ask you this. I, I, I've been challenged with this and I just, Maybe you can right. you, maybe you can come with some of this with a listener and we can create something here. But I think we should we should put down a 90 day challenge. I mean, it was three months. 
Obed Edom, and it was pronounced change, transformation in his life from three months of exercising the freedom, the 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 giving God's spirit the freedom to roam the house, so to speak, to roam anywhere, any area of our life that we've kept private, secret through our unwillingness to allow God's purpose, plans uh, for that particular area of our life to become you know, attached to what God wants us to do, to allow the Holy Spirit to move in our life, in our Shit. house, unhindered, uh, not being comp compartmentalized, was the challenge for the listener, I think, for the next 90 days. 90-day challenge, roam the home. The roam the home 90-day challenge. I like it. I like it. Roam the home. Gift the shift. <laughs> yeah, right? We're coming up with them all. This, that's the Holy Spirit work. Access. Uh, yeah. Access. Yeah, um, but that, and that in the morning, it, yeah, and I mean, when you start your day and all throughout the day, you, yeah. like I and I've been, this has been recent for me as well. Hey, look, I'm giving you that part of my life, right? right? Or when I think about it, or when I think mm -hmm. about how bad I am, or these say, hey, I'm giving you that part of my life, mm -hmm. or you know, I'm giving you my job, mm -hmm. that part of my, I'm mm -hmm. giving you my family, mm -hmm. I'm giving you my home, I'm mm -hmm. giving you my son, I'm I just trying to. Really mm. get get mm. that out of my system. Mm. Hey, I'm mm. giving you that area of my life, and mm. to keep repeating that until that becomes a reality in your life. That and that's what I was going to say. Another thing that I do to practice just His presence is I talk out loud to Him. Like if I got a right. question when I'm reading or I run into, God, I wonder why, and I'll just say it out loud. I wonder why you did that for David, or why this happened. And I'll just make it very clear that I'm asking a question to him as if though he's standing right next to me or mm, yeah. in the car with me. Well, do you believe that he is I with do, you? I do. That's why I do <laughs> right. that. But yeah. I need to hear myself say it. And oftentimes, really, really quickly, there's a there's an answer. I, I, I go, and it's not a whole day, and it's not a long time, when I ask questions out loud to God, the, the presence of God, there's an answer. I get answers. Yeah. And so I just want you to know, yeah. that's why I do that too. Man, when you said that, I just, it just reminded me of this one time, dude, I was climbing a tree or so. I don't, I don't remember what I was doing, but I was just like, it was silent. I didn't have my ear headphones going. I was just, I was cutting the branch. I was doing something. And all of a sudden, just in my spirit, I heard, Hey, and I go, <laughs> I go, I go, I said, I literally turned. I said, what's up, Lord? And he said, nothing much. And that was it. And that was it. But it was like, it was so clear in my spirit. It was just a, like, hey, I mean, that's literally what I heard in my spirit. I was like, I was like, uh, speak, Lord, your servants listen. I said, what's up, Lord? He's so good. Man. He is, man. You know, I just, I thought of something real quick. I want to get this in before we shut it down. Um, yeah. You know, it says that he blessed um, his household, blessed him yes. and his entire household. And his entire household. And I remembered where David's writing Psalm 23 and he says, my cup runneth over. Yes. If the Lord's pouring me a drink and my Come cup's on. running over, I'm going to find more cups. Right. Bring me your cup, brother. Right. The Lord is pouring. Right. That they, reminds me of the story whenever they were gathering the vessels for the oil, whenever he was pouring the oil, go. because God is only limited there by the amount go. of emptiness you bring him. So if you give him some capacity yeah. in your life, this they, they, days, they, the oil stopped because they didn't have any more vessels to bring him. That's why it stopped. But yeah. even more so, you think about the role of the man in this house. He was the one who welcomed the presence of God in. Amen. And then the whole household okay. was blessed from that leadership decision of saying, we're going to, as for me and my house, mm -hmm. we will serve the Lord. Dang. That'll There's, preach for husbands. <sighs> yeah. So I'm just, a husband. Yeah. Just, just something to think about when we think about that. So I, I, you, I'm not going to push the 90 day thing, but if people, we want to go to the next level with that. I think that God would honor that decision. I think so I, too. I think that people won't, will, they, they won't come to a point of ending with it. I think what you'll end up right. seeing is like, oh, this is better. Well, let me, you let know? me just throw something in there because I was going to talk about, you know, anytime I'm, I'm pressing into the Lord. I uh, heard another guy talk about this and he said, it's just as easy as this because you're focusing, you're getting focused on what is already true and what is already reality about who God is and who you are in him. You just mm. need to reshift, refocus. And so typically when I'm going to press in, I say these two words, I'm in you, or these two sen sentences, I am in you mm -hmm. and you're you in me. me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And right there, you, you're reminded of the reality of where you are and where he and is. And that's a mind blowing mm -hmm. reality, man. Mm -hmm. And you have to embrace that. And so then you can have that moment. So instead of groveling, Oh Lord, I, I'm in you and you're you in, are me. in me. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. So it's so good to see you. And what, <laughs> what's the difference that 1% can make? Oh yeah. Oh, oh that's real, right. Do you remember that? Do you remember that? Is this 1%? Dang I mean, Jeff Jewett. Yeah. You think about the three months is just 1% of what Abinadab had. 1%. 
Yeah. Is the difference between night and day? Do you remember that? You did. I remember you saying that. <laughs> yeah, go go back, season one. Yeah, so I remember you saying that. That was yeah. that was a mind blower. One percent. So, I, I'm just I'm just blown away with it. I pray that the Holy Spirit continues to just continue to speak with people and be uh, encouraging. He draws us with His love and kindness. No one can come right. but through that. And so His kindness leads us to repentance. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's good, man. So I got a question. Okay, serious question. How many dabs could have been a dab dab if it had been a dab could have dab dab? <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> you tell me. I'm going to leave it alone. <laughs> He's probably really frustrated for 20 years, though. I'm going to tell you that much. He, <laughs> 20 years of nothing. <laughs> That's funny. I think Obed Edom was the one dabbing with the presence of the Lord. Yeah, yeah, and hey, if you're listening and you, want to, and you are really serious about doing that 90-day Rome the Home Challenge, like if you get some results, man, just like we were talking about, if the Lord's been good to you, dude, email us. Tell us how the Lord's been good. You know, it's what I mean? ninety days from the time this will air. Uh, when you that, we'll do the, the eleventh. It'll be the eleventh. That's my birthday. So, oh, okay, you gonna post nice. it on the eleventh, <laughs> dude? No, oh, will it? It's this Saturday the eleventh. It's this Saturday the eleventh. Oh, okay, and that's my birthday. So, yeah. I don't know if you knew that or not. I did. Mm. I did know. All right. November the 7th is November 90 days. November the 7th yeah. is 90 days. 90 days. Thanks, brother. We got a fact checker in the house right now. So <laughs> thanks, brother. I appreciate it. Well, Salty Dogs Podcast, season two. Thanks this for having is, me on, guys. Yeah, yeah man. It's, been, it's always, it's always so good, man. Always good. It's always good, Pastor Dion. Don't forget to check out SaltyDogsPodcast.com. You can shoot us an email. You can sign up for our email list. Uh, follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at Salty Dogs Cast. Check out patreon.com slash Salty Dogs Podcast if you uh, feel like you want to help support the podcast. And uh, other than that, man, it's been great. Good stuff, Casey. I'll see you here in a minute. Yeah, I'll see you here in a bit. All right, brother.